we going in levels? No, it's good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, so, you have a very successful YouTube channel. Yes, I guess so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which happened somewhat by accident and somewhat because um, I decided to commit to it, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I watched your um, Q&A that you sent me. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that is um, that, that's on your channel. Interesting. Very interesting. There's several, several things there that, are, that I can relate what to. What stuck out to you? Um, when you... Uh, uh, I, I didn't want to get right into it, but... Um, when you said um, when your dad suddenly died and it made you decide to do it, I think that is a big turning point in my life. But yeah. wouldn't it be probably for most people's? Yeah, wouldn't I, it be? I, for I, fortunately, I, I I haven't had that experience yet. But um, yeah, I mean, th- yeah, things like family deaths or a friend of mine died or accidents and things like that, traumatic experiences, they make you. Uh, make you do things, don't they? Give, make you think. Well, they made me. Mine made me think. Right, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Now you know that you're delaying it for no reason, and there's no reason why you can't start now. The one particular thing that kind of um, that springs to mind just just from you mentioning it now yeah. is um, we we actually don't have that many photos of my dad oh, right. just on his own okay you know just this kind of portrait or anything so every photo we had of him was with you know the family or kids or, or something and he'd be sort of looking at yeah, yeah the yeah. kid or, or, yeah, yeah. or doing something yeah so he died back in 2010 right and um before then we didn't really have camera phones you certainly didn't have yeah. them everywhere yeah you know even facebook and things like that were in that infancy mm. um so I think that's partly to do with it and partly just because of the man he was. He, mm. he wasn't at all vain and he wasn't at all, um, you know, interested in that kind of thing, really. Yeah. But it gave, but it made you, it gave you whatever you needed to, to, to well, what was it? I mean, you were, well, you were already doing it, but you were yes. a side project. I was already, um, I was already making a living from being a guitar teacher. Right. And I was already in a, Function band, okay, yeah, wedding band, but yeah. most, you know, that's what we were. Yeah, and um, I was also doing live lighting for bands. In fact, at the time at Leeds Academy, which oh, is wow, quite yeah. quite a decent venue, so yeah, I got yeah. to in that kind of industry. That's quite a high level for it. Yeah, which was a hangover from university. So studying um, music technology at university. I believe you studied music tech as oh, well. I did. Yeah, at college. Yeah. 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 And um, the the gap year work placement yeah. for that was at the lead mill in Sheffield. Okay. So that was the first kind of properly paid industry work in the music industry. Yeah. I always saw that as kind of like the proper music industry. <laughs> and then the wedding band or, or guitar teaching was like me yeah. just doing my hobby Having for fun. money, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, certainly uh, when, when my dad died, it made me think that uh, I don't want to be doing the live tech in forever late nights yeah yeah um not a pleasant i once got uh sort of interviewed i was working at um leeds university student union as right. a tech as well at the same time freelancing okay. yeah you take yeah, yeah. work for different venues yeah and um they said what's what's your working environment like as as, as well as you know the questions about your job and i was like it's dark <laughs> It often gets to 3 a.m. and I haven't left work yet. Yeah. It's smoky, it's loud, I have to wear earplugs all the time. And she sort of looked at me and went, most people answer they work in an office. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it, the, the little things like that made yeah. you think that this isn't what I want to do forever. Yeah. And I certainly don't want to be doing it in 20 years time. I couldn't imagine that next step up in the teching in- industry mm. uh, for lighting or sound, which was you tour the world, getting paid, Virtually nothing, but you should feel grateful to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't even really get to play the guitars or anything. Yeah, that, yeah. that didn't seem like me. So that definitely, all of those things kind of culminated in. I'm happy to play in the function band, but I really think the teaching side of things is the thing that I should be doing. And uh, it wasn't long after that that I, I just filmed sort of a handful of, of YouTube videos in, in 2012. Right. Tell you what, I, I, I think this is such a big message about what I've got to say today. I really thought I'd missed the boat with YouTube. Okay. <laughs> I cannot tell you, because there were already, the, so the big, certainly in the guitar uh, teaching world, 
um, you know, to been going since about 2007 or something. Uh, and yeah. the biggest, you know, YouTube guitar teachers forever, you know, they were already doing it before I was even teaching, yeah. you know, privately. Okay. Um, but, so I thought I'd already missed the boat, but no one was really... You know, you didn't know someone who was a YouTuber. I don't think that yeah. was even a word back in 2010. Yeah. Um, so in 2012, I started filming some videos just as advertisement for private lessons. And um, that was when um, one of them started to get some views. And the, of the ones that I filmed, they were the easiest things, easier than anything that I could find on YouTube, but that allowed you to play a song. Okay, yeah. And that was, that was where I felt like there might be some kind of thing in there. Yeah. And um, all of these were filmed on an iPhone 3. <laughs> so bad quality. Yeah, yeah. But I took some time to light it right and, and yeah. thought about the background and things like that. And I think it was when it got about, one of the lessons got about 50,000 views that I started to think, ooh, I should yeah. refilm these. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd, yeah, you yeah. know, when you think, I don't want that being seen by a lot more people than that. I think yeah. I can do better. <laughs> so I refilmed them and then thought of that as the start of a, a course, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, again, really just to advertise private lessons, but um, thinking if someone in America s saw that, they would get something from it. Right. The first one of that batch that I filmed is now the biggest guitar, the most watched guitar lesson on YouTube. Wow. By a long way as well. Really? Like, it's hard to be modest about it because it's got over 15 million views. Jeez. And I actually don't think there's another video that's got over 10 million views, but there might be now. Okay. But I know it's, it's like by a long way. Yeah, that's and incredible. Yeah. 15 million. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah. that is the equivalent of winning the the lottery okay um but also it's given me so much more than just you know it's, it's something that a lottery win would give you it's given you that direction yeah and a starting point that then goes on to uh, to do whatever you want with it really yeah so so yeah you you your video got 50,000 views and you decided to maybe put some time and money into production values and yes you, did you just did you do them again um yeah so the, the it, it was essentially the, the 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 biggest video that i've got is called play 10 songs with two chords yeah and that is my absolute beginner's first lesson as well so we teach the chords e and a major right and then i go on to show how you can play the other songs with them but the main focus of the lesson is exactly what i would teach say if you were came to me for a private lesson it was your first ever guitar lesson that's what i'd done and okay. and that's what i'd done with over a hundred people before then uh, that okay. were paying for private lessons yeah, yeah. i literally just thought everything that I, I do in those first sort of five to ten lessons that someone pays me for at the moment yeah that's what i'm going to put online uh, okay. and it's also i realized quite uh, quite early on that was my niche because yeah. before i'd started you know, filming a lot of YouTube videos, I'd taught hundreds of people privately. Yeah. I had 40 students a week back in 2011, 2012. Yeah. Some of those were, um, you know, group lessons, but mainly that's one-on-one -on -one, and that's for an hour. Yeah. So it, yeah. it was seven days a week. Yeah. It was a lot of people. That's a lot there's of a, experience. There's a lot of time yeah. there. And, yeah. I, and I really couldn't be doing what I'm doing now, which is just filming lessons for, for YouTube. Mm. Um, I couldn't do that now without those five years of, of doing as many lessons yeah. as I could. Um, so that's the first video of a series of 10. Each each one of the 10 teaches another song. Right, That's okay. the idea yeah, of it. Yeah. And I did film those on my iPhone, you know, the series of 10 videos. Yeah. And that's where I started the refilming at the start of 2013. Okay. If you think back to 2013 though, that Christmas, the iPad came out. Oh, uh, okay. Basically. Okay. And we all got phones with better internet and yeah. better screens. And <laughs> yeah. suddenly YouTube became a lot more of a thing. Yeah. And it started to become a lot easier actually to uh, to monetize through AdSense, is, is the way that I still do it today, yeah, yeah. just the same okay. way as a website has ads on it. Yeah. Um, and before then you had to sort of uh, apply for a network and things like, you had oh, to okay. go through someone else and you had to be sort uh, of accepted. Yeah. Whereas, um, the, the Google way of doing it when, when YouTube was bought by Google, it meant that anyone could do it. 
And again, that made me think, ooh, that's probably something that I should do. Seeing as I've already got some views anyway, Yeah, let's look into that side yeah. of things. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I think um, platforms like YouTube, um, or even just th formats and the ability to be able to film something and put it online, uh, much like podcasting where you can record, you could probably, I think you can do it all from your phone, you could record a podcast on your phone, upload mm -hmm. it on your phone, you don't need anything else, you mm -hmm. probably don't even need an internet connection. Um, I mean, it's just putting the power in your hands. I mean, obviously there's a lot more stuff out there and it allows people to put stuff out that maybe wouldn't get on a network for a reason because it's not very good, but... Or matter. just because they've not done it yet. You well, know, maybe, they've not yeah. done the yeah. thing that, that they might get big for or might get known yeah. for. And um, I mean, it, it's probably why you, why you started where you started, but what is the thing that makes you kick onto that next level and, and do something with, with what you're doing? Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you that. What made you start this podcast? Oh, um, I know you're an avid listener from yeah, yeah, yeah. listening to a few. Yeah, yeah, thank you. But what you. makes you want to do it? Um, well, I love, I li listen to podcasts all day, every day. You know, I, in fact, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of music now <laughs> because I've just got a constant backlog of podcasts that I'm trying to work through and I don't like missing an episode so I, so that's, that takes priority um, but so many of the ones that I listen to um, aren't like comedy or whatever they're just talking to people mm -hmm. sometimes it's an interview about their, what they're doing or they're releasing an album or a film or a comedy special or whatever but the ones I really like are the ones where they're just, they're just chatting about stuff like you I have agree. a regular conversation. I mean, they might say, they might be on this week because they're doing some promo this week, but if it's like on the Rogan podcast, they're there for three hours. Yeah. The promotion bit is five minutes. And yeah. And then they talk about the stuff that they really care about. Or That's even, what I like too. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I, I do catch up with some interviews on YouTube and things. And the problem is they're five minutes long. Yeah. So if you watch three interviews, you've seen, you know, they're answering the same questions. Or if you hear them on Radio 1 or Radio 2, yeah. you know, you're know you going to hear the same thing. Whereas a podcast is going to be at least an hour. They'll yeah. say that five minutes. Yeah, yeah. But then they'll actually get into the bit that they didn't get to say or they couldn't say yeah. on telly, which is so much more like useful or yeah. interesting or just insightful, I think. Definitely, definitely, that's it. And it's it's like the same reason I like watching the bloopers and the outtakes on a film. Yeah, because yeah. Because you get to see the person. Yes. Not the act, not the actor that they're that they're portraying or the character they're doing. You you get to see them all laughing and you know yeah they're out of character and they're real. That's what that person is actually like. Whereas if you're just watching them do a five minute interview about their latest album, all you know about them is seeing them on stage as their stage persona. Um, and then the, the you know the the three questions that they've answered in every interview for the last two weeks or whatever. Exactly. So it, it's 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 just real. Same could be said of YouTubers, to be honest, because yeah. um, you know if if people follow me on my YouTube channel, what they're normally going to see is me saying hello, this is this lesson for thirty seconds, mm. and then I'm just teaching the lesson for another ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of channels that are getting quite big now um, that. I don't even, I, and I, I watch them regularly, I don't even know what the guy looks like, especially yeah. guitar teachers, because okay. you just get the hands yeah, shot, yeah. right? Oh, okay, yeah. And I've made quite a conscious effort to put my face, I don't mean, Christ, yeah. the thing's called Andy Guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I put yeah, my yeah, name on it, yeah. but I, I do want to get the personality in there because I actually, I'm, I'm well aware that people, um, you know, maybe watch three lessons of you and then go, right, you're my guitar teacher. Yeah, now. yeah. That, that genuinely okay. happens. And I, <laughs> yeah. and I can see why from a, a learner myself. Um, you know, sometimes you want to learn guitar because you like certain bands or certain artists or you like a, one song and you want to be able to play that. But the thing that's going to keep you doing it is um, some, uh, that human connection, I think. Yeah. Um, and I know it's you, you, you mentioned in a previous podcast that you're uh, that you learn via Duolingo, the app. I have to, yeah. I, I need to. I haven't brought. Oh, that. tell me about <laughs> it. Oh, I'm, done. I'm yeah. the worst because I, 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 music has always been something that's kind of come second nature to me to do. Okay. I have an aptitude for it. Okay. I don't. I'm not really sure about the talent question of whether you're born to do something or anything. Yeah. But I really believe that I have an aptitude to be able to sit with something and make music from it no matter what it is. Okay. Um, from, from the way that I learn and things, I didn't really have a guitar teacher um, when I was learning guitar, okay. which looking back now, it kind of seems crazy. I think, yeah. well, what was it? I was just wasting a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I did have 
uh, piano lessons, music lessons. Okay. I took an extra GCSE in GCSE music right. that we did external because we weren't really happy with um, what we were getting from, from the school that I went to. Yeah. And then studied it at college, but I didn't have guitar lessons. So uh, I always learned everything pretty much by ear and the odd music book or yeah. there was one other guy at school who, who played guitar so you know he showed me things mm. but um, that's something I have an aptitude for something I do not have an aptitude for at all is learning languages yeah, yeah. foreign languages yeah. are, are so foreign to me <laughs> and it, it is embarrassing in fact I'm the only person from my entire family to ever pass French because okay. I got to see. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not a good pedigree for it, and that is nothing to be proud of. <laughs> and, uh, and I've forgotten most of that now as well. Yeah. And uh, it's Spanish that I really want to uh, okay. kind of learn at the moment. Yeah. And um, yeah, Duolingo has been good for it, but one thing it hasn't helped with actually, and I, and I noticed this because um, we got back from Primavera not long ago, uh, yeah. Barcelona. Yeah. Um, I, d I didn't practice my speaking enough with it. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I think when anyone's learning anything, to get some reward from it and to get some benefit from it immediately, you need to practice the thing that you actually want to end up doing, yes. as well as just trying to get better. Too many, too many people, especially when there were, you know, people paying me to teach them guitar, and I would say, great, what do you want to learn? Yeah. And they go, I just want to get better. <laughs> and it's kind of like, okay, yeah. so there's all these things that we can do, and I can get you to any one of them, so there are styles, genres, everything like that and it's it's pretty simple as a beginner I okay, think yeah. I think the easier you go the more direct a route it is but then it branches off into whatever you want to do yeah and if you don't decide on what you're going to do you're not going to get there basically yeah you're going to go everywhere yeah yeah um that's what put me off lessons at school actually because uh I had a nylon string guitar mm. and we were all sat there in a group when I was like nine years old or something trying to play poly wally doodle or something <laughs> And the, the first thing that I remember ever wanting to learn a guitar from the earliest memory of it is Marty McFly, Johnny Be Good. Yeah. And it is for so many people my age, I'm sure yeah, it, it yeah. was somewhat of a thing for, for you as well, because you just watch it so young and you think, that looks like the most yeah, fun that was cool. ever, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's, that's my primary thing. And I could not see how Polly Wally Doodle yeah. was going to get me to play... Yeah. Marty McFly, which seemingly he played it by jumping up and down, yeah. like that's, that's looked like what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, with the apps thing, the thing that they lack is that personality um, that, that kind of encourages and keeps you going and spots something that a computer can't. Yes. You know, spots what you're liking and what you're not liking. Yeah. So, uh, yes, in hindsight, it may surprise you, but I think having private lessons is the best way to learn guitar. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's so true. Yeah, it's funny, I uh, uh, recorded a podcast this week with Fred Claridge, who that came out yesterday, and uh -huh. he's, he's a, a professional drummer in, in a couple of different, couple of different bands, and then he teaches percussion and things in, in schools. Um, and he was saying, I think it was when he went to see Snarky Puppy, and they were speaking at about it after I think there was like a Q&A or something but he said learn to play music learn to play whatever music you want to play not just theory working through the grades and things and I've said it I've said it a hundred times before yeah saxophone I played that for two or three years but I didn't like any of the music we played because yeah. it was just you know old lang syne and all that sort of stuff yeah and you I, couldn't and see I, how it was going to yeah, get you how is this relevant to me exactly yeah. how is it going to connect with the songs that i listen to normally yeah. but that uh, what your um the, the drummer there's just said is exactly what i agree with you should learn music and that's what i did yeah. i learned piano and before then through school you know literally primary school so aged eight um you know those little flute lessons yeah I had a clarinet because my sister had a clarinet, so I borrowed that to have some lessons with. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that connected with me was piano and guitar because that's how you could create songs and that's how you could sing songs while playing. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's, that's still the thing that I find most rewarding and just the most fun. Yeah. You know, you can't be thinking about many, uh, any worries in your life or, or what you're going to have for tea while you're playing and singing a song. Yeah, it's yeah. intense, so it's just like... Um, yeah, it's 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 a mind clearer and it's just it's just fun. It's really yeah. pure, I think. Escapism, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And if you're playing other people's music, particularly people that you admire or look up to or who have inspired you, you 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 become them, don't you? you, you yeah. You're, you're sort of looking at yourself 
an out of body experience, but you're them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that's and that's definitely a great place to uh, to start learning from, especially if you want to perform. Yeah, I remember it was, it was a really big step for me to start performing. So I have played in bands, and I've also had to teach myself how to speak on camera. Right. Look at the camera and okay. treat that like a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a skill, and yeah. it, it, like any other. And um, there was definitely a couple of things that I did for that when it, when I was sort of in my first band and at the first band I ever joined just sort of made at school I was the keyboard player okay because uh, my mate who sang and played guitar thought he could get me involved and thought it'd be really good for me to play keyboards and I'm like oh, I'll join your band yeah. I'm secretly I'm like I don't want to be the keyboard I want to be the yeah. guitarist that's yeah. not cool I want to be the guitarist I want, to, I want his job yeah but I was like yeah I'll join your band because yeah. no other band to join when yeah. I went to school do? I was in yeah um and we built up, um, you know, enough songs to say, okay, we might need to play some guitar on these. So I'm like, great, and I, I think I should play guitar on on all of these. <laughs> you know, just trying to get away yeah, yeah. away from the uncool keyboard player, <laughs> I guess. But uh, in in hindsight, it's so much fun to to do both and to to be a keyboard player or a pianist. Yeah. But guitar has got that that coolness yeah. factor, hasn't it? Definitely. And it was actually the the singer then did the lead singer thing and left, and. Um, <laughs> I was sort of we were just still jamming at weekends um, you know 15, 16 year olds mm. and auditioning people that would answer the classified ads in the back of the newspaper oh wow no internet yeah. back then yeah yeah um, and the people that would come through would just be like why, why has he come here we're like he's like 30 and we're 16 it seemed like he was from another planet you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. and then we just got other people come and we're like no this isn't working so I was like let me sing just so we can rehearse yeah. just, and, and, and we'll see how it goes yeah. and then after a month of doing that it was like we could gig this yeah. I know I'm not the best singer in the world yeah, yeah. but we can gig in a pub with this yeah. and um, but yeah that's the, I was, I've pretty much been the singer in every band I've been in ever since yeah that happens so often. I see it with bands that come here because lineups, particularly with new bands, it, it takes, it can take, for, you know, forever. I've had bands that practice once a week, the same time every week, and it takes them six months to get a lineup sorted, mm -hmm. you know, to get the right member. And more often than not, somebody will stand in because they need to rehearse the, the full set or whatever, but they don't have a singer or they don't have a bassist. So somebody will pick up the bass or somebody will go to sing and they realise that, you know, you practice for six months and you'll be good at anything. Yeah, hundred so percent. The, need the best people to be in the band are the people that stood next to you, yeah, yeah. wanting to do it, yeah. rather than you know wanting to put an advert out either online or in a newspaper, you know, advertising for Kurt Cobain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And um, but but I was very aware. Certainly, when the you know the dream was always like being a band or, or be some kind of artist or something but I was always aware from being very young that I'm not the guy whose name would be on the ticket I wouldn't be the the front person okay. as it were um or uh, at least that was that was what I always imagined imagined at the time I always saw myself as that sort of secondary person who was involved heavily in kind of the recording and and uh you know a tour with the band and, and co-write but it was always kind of, to be honest, just from, because of the time when I was going into music, like the biggest thing was Robbie Williams. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's what a front man looks like. Oh, yeah. I don't look like that. <laughs> but I look like that guy next to him, Guy yeah. Chambers. Okay. And then you get the CD and you go, it says by Robbie Williams and Guy Chambers. So I'm like, every so who is this guy? Yeah. Don't know what he looks like, but looks like he's, he's earning a living here. And, and <laughs> that, was, that was always my role. So, so okay. through like teenage years, through university and college and all that, kind of keep my eye out for a, a front man kind of guy yeah. and um, yeah never to be honest never really spotted one and always had to come to that role myself yeah um, but I did kind of miss one as well All right. um, so I went to Barnsley College um, when would that have been around 2003 um, with Alex Turner okay. from the Arctic yeah. Monkeys <laughs> and um, yeah. of course I'm from South Yorkshire I lived in Sheffield for a year Everyone who lives in that neck of the woods, and especially if they're my age, say, oh, yeah, I knew Alex Turner, yeah. or his mum's friends with my mum. Everyone's got a story. Yeah. But I did have three music tech lessons a week yeah. with the guy for yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. We were friends. We weren't particularly close. But, you know, I got to know I never spotted yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And two yeah. years later, when I'm two years into my music degree, thinking I'm doing 
all the right things to progress or, or, or to get better or to possibly even have a career in music and then the Arctic Monkeys go and do that and I'm yeah. like, oh wow, <laughs> did, did see that one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that quiet lad in the, class who, in the class who wouldn't say boo to a goose. <laughs> I never, I never saw that. And was he, was he pushing himself forward as that anyway at that time? Um, what he, what they would, it was him and Matt Helders, the drummer, did the degree that I did. Right. And I know that they were just starting. They'd formed the band, but it was a case of, you know, Matt needed to learn drums to be a drummer, like you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lad called Andy. I can't remember his second name. who was the bass player pretty much had to learn bass to, to okay. be it's exactly how you say it, but they're a group of friends yeah but i do know that they were they were incredibly well connected with and best friends with all the musicians in sheffield okay and there was a real there was a real scene brewing that went on to become that indie 2005 that was big in sheffield and, and yeah. big in other places okay it was a real indie revival i think from uh, the strokes kind of started a lot of that yeah I think the Strokes in 2001, before you know the years before then, guitar music had properly died after yeah. Oasis. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, there was a, a sort of a yeah a quiet period, I suppose, mm. and they really yeah really brought it back to a, a man singing. Yeah, to a, to a to a band who would play a small gig and it'd be great. Yeah, rather than a, a, a guitar band having to satisfy Nebworth. Yeah. It was like the smaller the room, the better. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, every, you know, the Libertines came along, and they were doing a load of secret gigs in like a friend's dorm or yeah. or yeah, house yeah. or wherever the living room gigs. Yeah. And then everything sort of brewed from that. But I did work in Sheffield at, at the Lead Mill um, in the placement year from university when all of that was at its peak, right. and it, it it couldn't have been a a better place to to be for it. I felt somewhat separated from it because it was my first full time job. Yeah. And uh, I was doing lights for bands and nightclubs and, and kind of working the gigs, but also I had to do whatever the venue needed me to do. So we were also setting the DJ up or putting the Christmas decorations out yeah, or, yeah. you know, the old toilet door here and there needed <laughs> fixing. And Andy, yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah. it was a, a really unique perspective on it. And uh, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you, you're in a band that, that whole time, are you? You're, you're doing your own thing or...? A, a succession of kind of small different bands. Um, original stuff definitely peaked while I was working at the Lead Mill. Right. Um, I was in a band that was in Barnsley actually. Um, we, we were playing sort of my songs because they needed a singer and they, they were a band that needed someone to come in and do that role basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, we can do it with my songs if you want, we, but we never really co written. Um, yeah, that that it, uh, we didn't really feel part of that scene as well. I, to be honest, I'm I'm a real classic rock person at heart. Okay, a real classic rock person like ACDC. I'm going to download festival on on Sunday. Passed it on the uh, way here. Actually, uh, right. <laughs> glad I'm not there today. It's yeah. shocking. It <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to see Aerosmith basically. Oh, well, and me and my girlfriend were like, Aerosmith are playing. It's it is their farewell tour. Yeah, they might do another one, but we're like, we're it's going. Not for worth that. the risk, is it? Yeah. But I'm no Steve Tyler. So yeah. the songs I really want to do are those sort of rock songs, yeah, and I yeah. can't do it. So um, that's the music that really connects with me the most, okay. um, as well as you know acoustic and, and general pop songs as well. Some of that comes from having a. I've got an older sister, right? So God bless her. She got me into all the Stock Aitken Waterman yeah, <laughs> of yeah. the early nineties when yeah. I was growing up. You yeah. know, I didn't u listen to the radio. I used to listen to the tapes that she left okay. when yeah. she went. You know, when she went out. <laughs> What's my sister listening to? Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, there, there is that sort of pop song mentality, but there's nothing more fun than the, the classic rock stuff, I guess. And it. it I couldn't really connect with me singing it and it couldn't really connect with a band and certainly not when everyone else is playing indie music yeah it kind of seems like a shame now but also you know if, if everyone was doing it then it didn't mean that it was ever going to last I think we're, we're another band that um, I knew the drummer of were Milburn right we've actually just reformed now oh, okay but they were they were almost like an understudy to the Arctic Monkeys okay um, many people would say oh they were well better but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they just didn't have have the legs to to find their own definition everyone just saw them as another Arctic Monkeys yeah, band yeah. and that's why they were done after one or two albums yeah. you know 
and they're making a bit of a resurgence now but you know some of that's down to nostalgia really they haven't yeah. really they haven't got a new song that's like oh that's them you know it's it's people want to hear the old songs really yeah. for nostalgia yeah that seems to be happening happening more and more often isn't it i suppose it's an age thing maybe that's why i'm noticing it more but but bands reforming and I mean, even even bands that weren't that were around not long ago. I went to see Hundred Reasons and Hellas for Heroes play together in a, at the HMV Forum. That was a, two or three years ago. But I mean, it wasn't that long that they were they were. Well, out I have a bit it. of an issue with this, especially seen as um, so. I'm a YouTuber, and I have made the commitment that I'm going to put at least two videos a week out. Okay. And everyone that follows me knows exactly what time they're going to come out. They're going to be on a Saturday and a Sunday. Right. And if I have extra lessons, they're probably going to be either side of that on a Friday and a Monday. Right. Um, and, you know, I do, I do have um, products that are sort of launched, which I kind of see, because I'm a musician, I kind of see them like albums. Yeah. But if, you, if you're a band... You have an album that probably takes six months to a year to make. And then you've got to tour that for a year, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. But you can't release a new album while you're out because you're still touring the old one. Mm. But therefore, there's a good, there's two years mm. where you've got to go away and come back. But if you go away for two years, people think you've gone away and you've died. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And so you're always making a comeback. With it. You're not making a comeback. You've, <laughs> yeah. you've got a new album yeah. and you had yeah, to yeah. go away and make it. Yeah. And I think songwriting in particular and recording... It can be a very wasteful art. You need to write a lot of songs to get even just one good one, never mind yeah. enough to make a whole album. Um, and we're all used to now daily content. You know, mm. the biggest YouTubers all have daily content. If you've yeah. got over a million subscribers, which I'm nowhere near, um, you're going you're gonna to have daily content. Yeah. And we're all used to that. And I know people that I follow, if they don't upload for a week, I'm like, you're all right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, going away for two years yeah. is bad for the band model. Yeah. And, and you can see the people who are really smart about it, you know, the Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran, basically. Mm. Love them or hate them, they'll have their album, but when they've been away, they've written for other people. Yeah. Or like Justin Bieber does, say two words at the start of another person's yeah. song, yeah. and then yeah. featuring Justin Bieber and everyone thinks it's, you know. Yeah, that's such a great point on that, because there's a... Um, a Skrillex version of uh, is it I don't know what the Bieber song is whatever it is but it's brilliant brilliant version I, I absolutely love it um, and Bieber was I, I watched a, a very brief 10 minute documentary about um, Skrillex and Diplo making the track and they did all the work and Bieber obviously well not even him somebody sent them the uh, the lyrics and they just dropped the lyrics in and they were speaking to Justin Bieber about the track and he was I think he said something along the lines of, yeah, I like Skrillex, he's got the best sounds. <laughs> and I thought, what is that? That's, That's a true fan, anything. isn't it? Yeah. I thought, right, okay, you weren't involved in this whatsoever. Words, he has the best <laughs> words too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, like, yeah, there you go. So just put, make sure your name's regularly appearing in the charts and on the radio. Keep yourself well, relevant and that's it. But I know all about this because um, so much of um, keeping a YouTube channel, channel alive is, is um, coming up with searchable terms that you yeah. might be able to get in on you know the new Ed Sheeran album yeah for example I, I filmed five lessons off off of five songs off of that album in one day and released them all in one day wow um and I did that because people are going to be searching for those songs yeah yeah so you can see why record companies for their biggest artists go get him to sing two words on this song yeah. and we can say it's featuring Justin Bieber yeah um I do think the the more impressive way of doing it is what Ed Sheeran's done which is just seemingly give away songs to it to well to good artists mm. but just giving away some really good songs that would yeah. quite happily you know serve him well yeah. that, that other artists would you know kill for yeah yeah um but he, he does seemingly be uh, he, he's I'm sure he co-writes a lot but he is a songwriter at heart I yeah. think and that's what connects yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not the biggest uh, Ed Sheeran fan to be honest. Um, no. And in reality, I haven't really given him a chance. I've not I've, I've never listened to one of his albums. I don't listen to the radio, so I, I wouldn't really know know about it. But um, the more I do hear about him, and I've read a couple of interviews with him, um, I think as usual, my judgments were wrong. <laughs> well, it, you know? like like does happen. Um, he won me over um, after me, you know, teaching privately and everyone asking for the A team or, or whatever. I really didn't listen to it at all. I didn't listen to that first album at all. And yeah. it was when Multiply came out and um, I was like, oh, okay, let's, let's listen to these new songs. And I went, I think that's a belting album. Okay. 
gave the first one a listen again and I thought, okay, there's some good stuff there. But when you hear it all done live and see it done live, you're like, that's more impressive. Yeah. The whole looper pedal thing. I mean, yes. how how yeah, no yeah, one yeah. else had really, really done that. Yeah, not in the mainstream. No, at not at all. At all. Yeah. I know, I, I always used to refer back back in lessons to Katie Tunstall. Okay. Because I saw her use a looper pedal on one of her songs on Jules Holland. Right. I always used to show people like that. Like, yeah. why would you buy a looper? That's why you buy a looper yeah. pedal. <laughs> yeah. And then you, yeah. you can just create a full band sound. Yeah. Um, just with an acoustic guitar. Yeah. In fact, I've seen some people do it live. Um, uh, John Gom, who's another Leeds bass guitarist, he's used a looper pedal on times or just creates, you know, drum sounds with his guitar. Yeah. It's better than half the drum sounds you could <laughs> spend thousands of yeah. pounds recording. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's really impressive. Um, but no one made that their act and no one tried to headline an arena yeah. with an acoustic guitar and a looper pedal. So you've got to have your thing and that's yeah. that's his and it's it's... It's guitar music in the charts. Yeah. It's all good with me. Yeah, yeah, that's such a great point, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's, you can, you can, it's easy to slag these things off and say, oh, they're just, you know, it's just pop, whatever. Oh, but my, my, one of my university, university lecturers um, who's been on the podcast, actually, Nathan, um, I, what I did think, anything in the charts is rubbish. Um, it's not cool. It's easy. It's, it's just made to be sold. It doesn't mean anything. And then, uh, um, we were discussing pop music in one of the lessons and he said, you know, um, oh, you're all so funny, you're so cynical about pop music, but, you know, if it's good, it's good. Um, and that really made me think about it. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to be too cool for school here. I'm yeah, not actually giving it a chance. You've got to give you, put your ego down and yeah. go, right, I might not, this might not be my favourite thing. Yeah. And to be honest, we all only have a handful of favourites, yeah. really. But, um, yeah, I do, I, I think the disappointing thing about pop music is kind of how low key it is at the moment yeah. if you listen to like the top 10 uh, certainly on Spotify um, which you have to say is is, is probably skewed yeah. um, you know because it's, it's we all use Spotify playlists yeah. and just leave it go. we haven't little, selected yeah. a certain song a lot yeah. of the time but it's just so downbeat and kind of you know the very uh, lots of pads and and just not very exciting to okay. listen to yeah. um, there were quite a few bands with that kind of sound at uh, Primavera, which I just came back from. Yeah. Um, Metronomy were one of them uh, who started off so kind of bright and, and then just just so chilled. The XX. I'm a fan of both of these bands, but I, I just literally find it hard to get through an album or a set yeah. without going, oh, come on, stick to, stick to the... the yeah. Stick to the stuff with a beat. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but that's not to say that I, I, you, that I only like stuff with a beat or only like the rockier stuff. Mm. It's just that... If it's slower, it's got to be interesting, and it just doesn't hit me emotionally. Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. doesn't hit me there. Yeah, and it obviously does some people because it that sound is connecting. Yeah. it's connecting throughout all of uh, streaming charts, and I think I think it's probably because people listen to so much music on on their phones and things. You know, if you're on the bus, if you're waiting mm. for something, you don't necessarily want. Yeah. You know, you want to chill, just going yeah. through your day, everything's all right, and um, yeah, it just doesn't connect with me. Yeah, no, I can I can understand that. I went to see uh, I went to see Tenacious D in uh, in Brixton. About, wow, when was that? I don't know, six or seven years ago, maybe longer than that. I can't remember. I think that's the same time I saw them at uh, Leeds Fest. Okay, they, they were on before Metallica, which I was just like, yeah. what? <laughs> what world are we living in? It was it was the tour they were doing when they had the giant inflatable devil that came yeah. on the stage. Pick a destiny tour. Yeah, and all that. yeah, probably. Um, but it was, I expected the band and it was the two of them acoustic um, and I was a little bit disappointed um, because you want that, you know, you want the drums kicking in and the electric guitar and, and the, the first bass. album in particular, it sounds great. Yeah. I mean, I think you've got Dave Grohl drumming the whole thing, yeah. so it's, it's probably going to sound pretty good, um, but, but it's a, a genuinely good sound on, yeah. on the album. But when you strip, and I think I'm a real fan of this as well, I like ACDC, the Beatles, like they're like the pinnacle for me. Fleetwood yeah. Mac as well in there, um, and everything else is sort of, um, you know, just just a, a newer version of of that, I guess, or a new twist okay. or a new personality. Yeah. But but it's that sound, and I like. If if you couldn't take any more bits away, uh, and it'd be as good, you know, it yeah, couldn't yeah, be simple. Yeah. If, if you took something away, there wouldn't be anything wouldn't else work. there. But there's. There's not a note wasted. Yeah, yeah. And there's not um, there's not just sounds there to just grab your ear and and, and do it. It's um, 
uh, there's a real simplicity to it that just connects. I and mean, if you can strip something down and it sounds just as good on acoustic guitar as it does on a flute, yeah. as it does with you singing it in the shower, yeah. then it's a really yeah. good song. It's yeah, that's really it. Song. Yeah, you can you can perhaps um, perhaps you can then by by having a full band play that that um, track, you're adding frills to it to give it substance I, maybe for example I mean, I mean I, I, this might not be the reason but who played the year before at Leeds Fest I, I can't remember Some, someone headlined uh, it might have been the Chili Peppers or someone like that but anyway mm. um, Tribute came on you know okay. you know, while you're waiting for the headliner yeah. of course you've got the headline crowd there just all waiting for that they didn't need they, they literally pretty much could have turned it yeah. off and everyone would have been yeah. singing it you know yeah. 100,000 people wow. just singing every silly line of tribute <laughs> yeah. and I think after that they had like Bohemian Rhapsody or something and it was the same thing I think they caught on like whoa stick yeah. that one on <laughs> and um, you can see why they went what are Tenacious D doing next year can we book them yeah because um, but yeah that's, I just think that's fabulous <laughs> that's interesting yeah to see to have them singing along to just the, the filler music in between the bands that's great. 100%. But, but hey, we've all we've all been to some kind of, uh, you know, 3 a.m. in the pub when Bohemian Rhapsody comes on. And again, yeah. you may as well just sing it a cappella or yeah. Hey Jude or anything. Yeah. You know, mumbling all, all the silly bits as well as anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Um, so, um, YouTube channel then. So, you you decided to give it a go. Started to... Um, started to have more production value maybe in your videos and I mean have you always um, from the beginning done Saturday and Sunday releases or that's no. something you've learned works well that, that, that brings up another point that, um, so it was the start of 2013 when I started filming more regular but but as I say I used to do kind of batches of 10 or, or batches okay. of 5 yeah. um, top 5s and top 10s do well on, on YouTube in general but I would spread it over 5 videos okay. to, to be able to get in depth and so you don't have a video that's an hour long or something yeah, yeah. Um, and I was playing in the function band and I was um, you know work, primarily my income was private guitar teacher still that that was what I did one to one face to face Yeah. in September well no it was later it was around November of the same year I think it was early November um, I had a pretty major RSI issue in, in my hand, right. um, which was very painful and there was no sort of incident, I didn't bang it in a door or yeah. fall down a mine shaft or anything. Um, so it, it, it's, uh, that basically meant that I couldn't play guitar, like I couldn't touch a guitar for six months. Wow. Um, really scary time, yeah. really scary yeah. time. Um, <laughs> And somehow during that time, um, the YouTube channel still grew right. because of the videos that I'd filmed before were getting views. Yeah. Um, and I, I just was kind of honest with myself and went, I can cancel all my lessons or I can keep doing the private lessons that I'm doing, but just have to describe what you're doing. And if there's anything that you can't describe to someone, well, I'll have to use probably one of the YouTubes that I've, uh, videos that I've filmed yeah, yeah. to show them, to, to back it up, to just to give them a, an example. Yeah. Um, but before then, my methods were, let's get, let's have a jam, man. You know, I'll show you this and then we'll play it together and everyone will have a good time. Yeah. And since then, um, it's really noticeable that, not because of the injury, but I think it's a lot better to, for the teacher to not play at all. Oh, okay. I think it can be really off-putting. Okay, here's here's how to play this song. Diddly diddly diddly. Uh -huh. Okay, now let's let's show you how to do it. And I just think it's um, it sets off the total total wrong thing. Um, I think it's much better to show each bit, get them to put it together, play along if if they're just struggling with timing or anything yeah. to keep them on the straight and narrow. But um, but yeah, I think that's, that that was a big lesson for me to learn. But yeah, a good six months without touching a guitar at all, and um, I have to be honest, to this day, it's still something that um, is still a niggle. It's it's not um, it's not something that stops me doing my job, but primarily because I, I teach beginners. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's a nerve related injury, it would seem, but I have seen every specialist that you can imagine over the last three or four years. And um, no one's been able to really even diagnose it. Okay. It's one of those funny, you know, we all know someone with a back pain, knee pain, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll see people and it'd be kind of like, well, don't know what we can do with you. Sorry, painkillers yeah. or, or nothing. Yeah. Um, 
there have been certain things that have really helped me. Right. Um, the first thing that really helped me was something called myofascia release, um, which is sort of phys- a kind of physiotherapy, but um, that specific term, myofascia release, is the thing that helped me the most. It it frees up your muscles, basically, that okay. all, they can get kind of stuck together, so it allows them to move freely. Yeah. Um, but that can be quite expensive, actually, so a much cheaper thing that um, <laughs> is much weirder but there's this little device called a SENAR device. S C E N A R. Right. Looks, like, you know, looks like a remote control, and it's an ele- electronic. It puts an electronic pulse, and you can use it anywhere that you have skin on yeah. your body. Yeah. And uh, it gets straight through to your muscles and tendons and all those sorts of things, and just um, puts a small, low electric current through them, yeah. with the intention of one promoting healing. But two, also numbing pain. Okay, yeah. Um, I did, there's many of them out there. I don't want to recommend any particular one. You know, yeah. there's no affiliate thing with anyone. But I would say that's the one thing that has helped me the most. Wow. 100%. And it's so weird. If, if, I think it was originally developed by like NASA or, or the, the Russian version of NASA um, to. Uh, to help astronauts, okay. you know, if they get any sort of problems um, up there. So obviously, with um, no gravity, there's less, yeah. you know, muscles have to do less. If you get any aches and pains, it's harder to run them off or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, I can see that becoming very big, at least in America, over the next few years because um, they're affordable and you can take one home, but also therapists use them as well. Yeah. It was the myofascia release guy that sort okay. of used one a couple of times on me, and I'm like, what's that? Yeah. I tried it. I went, how much are they? <laughs> so, you know, with with um, these things, you know, if if your hand hurts and you're playing guitar, stop Yeah, is yeah. the primary thing. And stop doing whatever it is. You know, if you have any, any knee pain because you play football every week, maybe you should give football a rest for a bit longer than you want to. Yeah. But then you might be able to play football again and you might be able to stay pain-free if you stop. Yeah. For if you're prepared to stop for six months, yeah. But yeah, I even went as far as uh, I recorded some Christmas songs with a, a friend of mine called Dave. Which, looking back, I was a bit mad to do, really. But um, he literally demoed the fingers, okay. and I gave the lesson. <laughs> and I got no negative comments or complaints oh, really? or people thinking it was strange at all. I literally, yeah. the thing's called Andy Guitar, but yeah. it's Andy and Dave for a, for a little while. Um, but yeah, that was a reason because I couldn't okay. play guitar. Yeah, and. I think it's a big thing for any self-employed musicians or anyone earning an income um, that is not residual, that is a service, um, to get kind of some kind of health insurance or, or something if you're uh, some kind of income insurance, basically, in case the worst happens. Yeah. But YouTube revenue was that for me okay. during that time. Yeah. And the fact that I could still work um, privately you know, through, through yeah. changing my methods, through just not playing in the lesson. Mm. But... Um, yeah, it was a scary time, a big eye opener, and was another kick along to not only massively appreciating the fact that it hadn't all fallen apart while I couldn't play, yeah, but um, that sort of dedication to the cause and, and filming as many videos as possible while I can do it because yeah. I remember that was like just oh this it's one thing I've been wanting something to take off you know as as you do you know something got kind of a lot of rabbits in the track and you just wait for one of them to set off going okay do that yeah and uh it did and then the, the rabbit got lame i guess um <laughs> but then you get another chance yeah and you really appreciate it yeah yeah that's it i, I find that all the time as soon as you have a little injury you think oh i can't work out today or do whatever it is you think oh you don't realize how like those days when there was nothing wrong with you, but you couldn't be, uh, bo- you couldn't be bothered to practice yeah, whatever yeah. you're practicing. And then that day that you can't, you're like, oh, I should have taken that opportunity. But you just re- <laughs> don't realise what you're missing out on. Like yeah. hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, that's exactly. And true. Which, which is why I do feel, um, I feel more for those people who um, really want to do something different, maybe start their own business or something. Yeah, but just don't have one specific passion or just don't know what their skill set's good for yeah and um what i did with with that was was definitely try as many things as possible as early as possible yeah um and then when one of them starts to take off you have to stop the other things and focus on that thing if you think it's the right thing to do yeah because 
things it's the default is for nothing to happen yeah the default yeah. is all of it's going to go nowhere or yeah. all of it will be at least average yeah. but when one thing starts to you think that's going a bit better than i thought it would double down yeah. double down and double down again. yeah yeah that's it because there is no we well yeah with business like well, i presume with youtube and and podcasting or whatever you'd you you make you have the idea you make it you put it out and then you see what happens you know or you start you think of a business you build it and you open the door and hope that people turn up you can't make you don't know what's going to happen you can do as much or as little marketing as you like it just depends on what happens on the day or who walks in the door so yeah as soon as you do get that that bite mm. yeah you really have to you really have to push it and uh yeah pounce on that if people like it then they're going to spread the word as well you know it's definitely it's, yeah but i do think it's important as well to um well the thing that's assisted me with making youtube videos is i was already a guitar teacher before and so i knew what those videos were going to be of yes but it should also i think there's a lot of people just i, I never want to over rely on youtube ad re revenue mm. it does go up and down regardless of what views you're getting it's okay. not consistent because it's um it's advertisers bid on it basically right. they say we want to advertise on these type of videos and we're going to throw this amount of money on this advert mm. it's going to be before it um so and it, at any point it could all just stop as mm. well the advertiser oh youtube's changed sorry you have all that those videos there but we're not giving you any money for it that could happen today or tomorrow yeah so i've i've um been very much strong on making books and and dvd content and um getting those that are genuinely going to help people but that are physical products basically to mean that I can take the time away from private lessons and um, spread it because you know to, to for the for the private lessons to go up to the, the the next level with anything you've got to teach a lot more people or you've just got to charge more per hour yeah I wanted to reach more people but there's only one of me yeah and I, you can't char I, I didn't want to charge even if I was the best teacher and the biggest name in the world you don't want to charge think, prices that people can't afford. Yeah. Especially yeah. when my lessons, even privately, are catered to the average working person. Yeah. Okay. You know, or child yeah. or, or retired. Yeah. Especially that the people that were sat in front of me when I was teaching 40 students a week were from all ages, all demographics. Yeah. I actually thought I'd be teaching 40-year-old boys, boys all the time. I yeah. thought it'd be those guys that called noodling in their bedroom, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> they were the people that didn't really need, like I did back in the day yeah yeah they can get a long way on their own actually they don't <laughs> yeah. need a, a teacher to show them stuff or if you do yeah. get you know a teenager you'll show them one thing and they'll come back the next week and the three steps ahead and it's like ah, oh, okay i don't have to i don't have to train you as much mm. i have to coach you and put you point you in the right direction yeah way more so you know record them more or trying to get them over stage fright and things like that trying to get them okay. connected with other musicians yeah. uh, at the teenage age yeah, that's yeah. that's where you probably spend more of your time doing with someone who's um you know in the 40s or something maybe it's more getting the fingers working again because they just haven't had that dexterity yeah. training that you that you have to work so much on yeah yeah that's true yeah we get a lot of guys coming in coming in here that played we're in bands when they were, you know, 15, 20, 25 or whatever, but then stopped playing and now they're 55 and they've started up again. Uh, they've just bought a new drum kit or they've just bought a new guitar and you can, you know, when they come out, they're sort of a little bit rusty, but it's like, it's just practice, isn't it? It's just repetition. and yeah. 100% and, um, you know, the, there's no time like the present to do it. Yeah. It, as I say, I thought I'd missed the boat with YouTube and then what happened after that yeah. happened. So, um you know, long may it continue, but um, whatever you're doing, the, the, there's no time like the present. And I've even done it with a, another channel because um, I started an Andy Piano yes, channel that, yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, too, somewhat, too much time on your hands. <laughs> not at all. Not at, I made everything <laughs> twice as hard for yeah, myself. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But what I was doing, um, one was just diversifying in case something happened to the guitar channel okay it's it is all on one channel so if something happens if that gets taken down for any reason yeah that like i i'm i won't say i'm out of a job because the website does well on its own a little bit but yeah, yeah. it's not good it's significant yeah so i wanted to just move on to something totally different and actually i've had a lot more piano lessons in my life than i have guitar and piano was the first in instrument i gained any real you know skills with okay um and I, I have a, a love for it as well in in its own way it's uh, you know sometimes piano lessons definitely get a bad rap 
Um, but the other thing was an insurance policy. Right. If I have no left hand, um, I can still teach beginner piano lessons okay. with the right hand. <laughs> or we can just do keyboard. Yeah. Or s- you've got something. You've got yeah. a lot more of a chance doing that than I have with, with guitar. Yeah. So in a way, it's, it's future-proofing as much as is reasonable. And uh, yeah, if both my hands get chopped off, it's Andy singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's always something. Um, so, so uh, you're you're not still teaching forty people a week? Not at all. Um, the one thing I'm getting into or stepping into is uh, is group workshops. So okay. I have a group workshop in Leeds in two weeks' time. So it won't be for anyone this particular one on uh, anyone listening to this podcast. But there might be future ones. Um, it's currently in Leeds, but I'm hoping to. It's trying it out for next year. Same with the piano channel. You've got to start something to see how it goes, learn from it, and then improve the next time you do it. And it, um, I'm doing this one. I'll probably do another one in September and then see if we can get one a month, something like that, next year. Cool. Um, yeah. that, that's the plan when, uh, when the YouTube stuff isn't... Well, at the moment, a lot of my time is just taken up making the premium courses and things. Right. Um, in fact, I did bring you a little gift. Actually. Oh. As, as self-serving... How about that? Well, you're oh, the first these. first person to bring me a gift. Oh, there you go, man. Well, um, these are my books and DVDs. And oh, wow! Stuff. Thank I've, you very much. I've taken so much time to make them, and I think um, you know, there's only the few people that buy them actually get to see a lot of them. So, oh, brilliant. I'm not saying that you need to learn guitar from me or need to learn guitar at <laughs> yeah. all, but give them to whoever will use yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll keep and, them in the uh, studio. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. people can look at them, and you know, family members. There you go. That's brilliant. That's where I'm Thank you very much. So these are available on your website, I presume, they are, and yes. through the YouTube channel as well. Yeah, andyguitar.co.uk yeah. is the best hub. In fact, we're putting a lot of work in to try and make everything easier to find and easier to navigate through the website than okay. it is anywhere else. So um, there will be an app hopefully coming out before Christmas. Excellent. Um, but yes, that's that's what a lot of the time is taken. This is why I ain't di- diversifying a lot. I'm dipping my toe into the group lessons yeah. and uh, and the piano. But there's um, we're, we're making sure to to really consolidate the Andy guitar thing as much as possible. Okay. So one thing I wanted to ask you is um, you're you're like giving away all the secret ingredients. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? So to speak. Aren't the you? lad who gives it away for free suddenly has yeah. a career in this You can thing. make a living from it and give it all away for free. Which is exactly what I saw happening with YouTube in the early days. Okay. I saw just how much um, the biggest YouTubers were just giving away all their content. But somehow, who was it? I think it was uh, Boyce Avenue, that was it. So back in like 2012 or something, there's a band called Boyce Avenue that just do covers on YouTube. Right. And I was watching, they're just doing covers, mainly acoustic. And I was thinking, blimey, these students have got a lot of money to throw about, haven't they? Mm-hmm. And then I've quickly, like from doing a bit of research, quickly written, no, this is their job. Okay. They do covers of songs on YouTube. Wow. Back in 2012. And that, and that that's all they do. Wow. And then a year later, they were suddenly touring. And I thought, okay, so... You're giving everything away on YouTube, yeah. but what that's doing is giving you an audience, which I know is what Damien Keys goes on and on about, yeah. and why, why I, I, I keep watching his videos to remind myself of it. Yeah. Like, if you have an audience, you win. Yeah. And um, that that's what I've seen. Why would you then buy something off that YouTuber or that person that you... Why would you buy a T-shirt if you like a band? Well, mm. yes, you want to support them, but... Um, I think people buy the educational products like that because they want structure. Yeah. That's yep. a beginner's course and then an improver course after that. And I think okay. that improver course is a really important level because, you know, a lot of people get the basic chords or strumming or songs under their belt and then it suddenly steps up to intermediate to be able to learn a full guitar solo or play the songs that they want to learn yeah. and there's a gap. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's what I've tried to just make that gap as smooth as possible for people with the improver course yeah so that is as much as possible like a linear structured course to get you um not just from a to b but a A, b c d you know following step by step um so that there's a real leave no man behind kind of policy with with me you know i i tend as i say i've got the easiest lessons on youtube in my opinion okay and that's for a good reason yeah it's to really get through to people that you can do this. Yeah. It's really not that hard, but 
you've you've just got to get your foot in the door and keep at it and um that's uh, that it's you've got to make keeping at it as entertaining as possible and as fun as possible yeah but while keeping up the right things you yeah. know training the right things so that's where the 10 songs with two chords come from yeah. and the materials that you know go with that are, are in the book um uh, yeah that's 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 the idea really that's that's a, that's a really good point yeah um that, that's also another thing that i spoke about with uh, um fred the, the drummer about practice and sort of saying how when you're learning it, learning an instrument, there's a lot to be said for for somebody who um, did the eight hours a day practice from when they were four years old yes. and are now, you know, amazing. Uh, we, we spoke about Tony Royster Jr. Do you know Tony Royster Jr.? I don't know. He, there's a famous video of him on, on YouTube f- when he was four or five years old um, and he's got, a, you know, a 30-piece drum kit and he's absolutely mind-blowing tiny little kid the sticks are as long as his arms you know but absolutely incredible um and um and, and he was obviously a kid that practices 10 hours a day or whatever and uh, and since then he's gone on to he was jay-z's drummer a few years ago for on his tour you know so he's sort of gone from the heavy theory practice religious practice every day um but then sort of gone into the um the hip-hop world um or popular music rather than like normally it's sort of you know classic instruments you know violin mm. um, um, orchestra sort of stuff where they pra- or piano where you're practicing a long time but it's finding that balance between practicing enough to know everything or know what you need to know for the music you're playing um, and, and, and then just getting the fundamentals right or knowing every single scale and playing it backwards and, and that can get boring quickly can't it exactly <laughs> and I do have um, generally a low attention span okay. unless I'm really into something right. in which case you know I'll, I will if, if I'm on a editing a video or something like that, I can be doing that kind of thing till 10 o'clock at night and I started just after 8 in the morning you yeah. know what I mean right. you have to tap me on the shoulder and go Andy you haven't eaten yeah. yet <laughs> but um, but if I'm into something that I'm, I'm if I'm doing something that I'm not into you've never seen anyone quicker just okay. lose interest right. so you have to figure out and be honest with yourself and go what am I into but that will also make me progress. Yeah. So, I mean, so often when I was kind of practicing guitar and, and um, sort of learning, as I say, by ear, what I was spending more of my time doing was actually recording and right. using things like Cubase to um, use com- make computer music, yeah. but with samples of real instruments. Yeah. So recreating songs just for fun. Yeah, just because yeah. I found that really cool that I could make something that sounded like that. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the first thing that I, I remember being really cool on guitar when I finally got a steel string acoustic guitar mm. strummed the G chord and went oh that sounds like that song finally <laughs> something that I'm doing sounds like I've heard before mm. so there's something really validating about that um, but I'm also really aware that if I'd have just stuck to for example like shred guitar mm. from being 10 years old yeah you would be a whiz kid yeah <laughs> But that just doesn't interest me yeah. anywhere near as much as a cracking song. Yeah. And um, I think we've also all, all know that guy in the guitar shop, like, noodling away. And it's, you know, to the casual listener, someone essentially showing off is just annoying. Yeah. If your hero, if, like, Slash walked in this room now and shredded yeah. a solo, we'd both be cap- captivated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's also because we've got that history with his songs and 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 they've had that emotional impact that we talked about before. Yeah. So that's really, really important. And um, I do think an education in any instrument should be a music education and a, a listening education as well. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's why you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a good point. It, it's, it's playing music, isn't it? And yeah, you do need to know some fundamentals and a knowledge of scales is, is helpful. Um, but Well, a mistake I've made in the past is putting, trying to put students onto music that I like. Okay. and expecting them to like it because right. they've come to me for lessons and they want to play like me mm. doesn't work like that <laughs> which is why I have to I have to record so many song lessons and put them on YouTube because once you might like one ACDC song and not the other yeah you know we all yeah, have our yeah. favorite there's no accounting for taste yeah. in a very good way that's yeah. the wonderful thing about it um so there are these principles and fundamentals but that's why there, there are so many songs that it can go into that can be daunting just find what connects with you and if no music is connecting with you at the moment but you want to learn an instrument um you need to get into you need to find your favorite band yeah and i do think um 
I know, I know for, for me especially, I know this is adver- actually an advertising thing where they say whatever band you love the most when you're age 16, mm. you will love more than any other music for the rest of your life. It's such like a, yeah. a crux age. Yeah. And uh, I know the, the biggest band for me were actually, I've got to be honest, it was The Darkness. Yeah. 100%. I said it right band, at yeah. that time, 2003, um, guitar music had been dead for a while. It was coming back with these indie bands and I... I like the strokes you know i like that i like certain songs by them and they do good albums but it wasn't connecting with that classic rock that i was playing in my in my band just just yeah. with friends from school and that kind of thing and everything we were playing was 30 years old and suddenly you've got a band that says we're doing this and it's yeah. now yeah and there's something different about it because you know he sings high yeah and uh, it sounds so different to anything else it just sounded like it was from another planet mm. i mean i could tell that it was doing a lot of the stuff that I was learning from classic rock and ACDC yeah. but there was a real freshness to it and a hell of a hit single as well so uh, yeah. yeah they went a long way to being my favourite band yeah, I, yeah I'm a big fan of the darkness and a lot of people aren't it seems a lot of people are obviously but, well but, you yeah. said the same thing about Ed Sheeran a second ago yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah that's true and that, that, I think it's just a, a, a um, fact of being popular if the more people you reach the more people are going to love you and the more people are actually really going to hate you because you keep popping up. Yeah. That song keeps on, on the radio and again and again. And sometimes that will mean, actually, on the fifth listen, this song's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it'll be like, you just won't give it a listen because you're, you, oh, not that again. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. I think more so, similarly to sort of Tenacious D and uh, and uh, Darkness and Steel Panther more recently. Yeah. You know, it's sort of, yeah, it's it's nostalgic, nostalgic but it's it's new as well. It's, it's there's in, some new, funny. Th- yeah. There's got to be some new twist on it, otherwise um, everyone is going to really notice that it is, it'll be the Milburn thing. Yes. You won't be able to yeah, yeah. craft your own audience or, or break through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah with, with, with my lessons, I think there, there has to be something that I'm doing um, that is me that I'm putting out there because people are coming to me as well as or instead of going to, going elsewhere. Yeah. You know, so there's something that's, that's connecting. Yeah. Well, there really is something that's connecting with, a, with a, 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 a channel like yours with so many subscribers and videos with the amount of views that yours have got. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, to think that you're reaching that many people, it's... You know, it is nuts it's and it, it does really um, connect you know people do send in photos of them jamming with their you know son or anything like oh, that right, yeah. or the the uh, there's a guy on Twitter that keeps sending me weekly photos of when he has his meet up with his mates you know <laughs> Tuesday night is their guitar night and they come yeah. round and go we're here again and, and you're on the telly <laughs> um, which which is which is great but I'm um, I'm also very aware I need to balance that with real world stuff okay. which is part of the reason I'm here as well and uh, why I'm doing these group lessons as well because yeah. I know that my time has to be prioritized to YouTube and making videos because that's what's gonna um, bring bring forward where where I bring me forward from where I am at the moment mm. but I'll be honest it's pretty dull most of the time being a youtuber I mean, it's a good job I'm really into music and really into <laughs> guitar otherwise y- yeah. you would get bored of doing it you yeah. have to you have to you have to balance it with, uh, as I say, real world stuff yeah. and uh, and variation. Yeah, awesome. Okay, um, well, uh, andyguitar.co.uk, did you say? That's the one. And um, what's the YouTube? Uh, well, it's sorry, for, search. if you search yeah. Andy Guitar, in yeah. fact, the, the um, uh, well, well, Andy Guitar, if you're looking for me, I'm just aware that this is, this, most people would just be listening for this. But the party trick is, if you search for guitar lessons, I'm currently second and occasionally I'm first wow, yeah. in the world. Yeah. And that is, um, yeah, it's hard not to always want to do that with when people say, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's check this out. <laughs> I've, st- I've, I've stopped myself doing that as yeah. much. Though I did always find that um, when even when I was just a teacher, not, not on YouTube, um, most people you would speak to down the pub kind of, ah, oh, I really wanted to learn guitar. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's nice that now I can give people somewhere that's essentially, it's it's all for free. There's, yeah. there's just those extra guidance if you want it. For example, if you wanted to have private lessons, the same stuff that I've given private lessons is in the book there. Okay, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Not bad for a guy who missed the boat, eh? Exactly. <laughs> and there's... As I say, the the lesson is there's hope for anyone. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you very much, man. Not at all. It's been a pleasure. Cool. Good talking to you. Thank you. Sweet. Sweet. 
So there it was, the Audio Works podcast, episode number 77 with Andy Crowley. Thank you very much, Andy. It's um, uh, much appreciated that you, you gave us your time and that you travelled down to, to come to the studio to get the, uh, well, to have a chat, really, I suppose. Um, fascinating guy. My not so subtle interview style in with the hard hitting questions straight away, um, but thankfully Andy was really open and um, and 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 fascinating as well. So um, yeah, like he's mentioned in the episode, if you are interested in um, putting out content on YouTube, what an excellent resource that guy would be. Already so successful and only getting more popular. Get in touch with him. As you've heard, he's a lovely guy. Send him a message, send him an email. Um, I'm sure he'll help you out, which is kindly offered to help me out as well with, with uh, this podcast uh, and maybe getting some episodes onto YouTube. So, so yeah, what a great guy. Um, to find him, I'll put some links in the show notes, but just Google Andy Guitar. He'll come up and stick it in, stick Andy Guitar into Facebook or Andy Guitar into YouTube. It'll probably be the first result. And um, yeah, so much information. Um, if you already play guitar, there will still be stuff you can learn from him. If you don't, some excellent beginners courses, even just how to quickly play one of your favourite songs with like two or three chords. You know, you can you can you'll be able to play a song in ten minutes. I mean, it's it's quick, um, um, but you know, it gets the foot in the door. It gets you on the first step of the ladder, and then you know, once you've got that, the world is your oyster. <laughs> 